Thank you. Seeing the clock is 10.15, it is now time for member statement. The member from Waterloo will be able to resume her debate at a later time. I recognize the member from Kingston and the Islands for a member statement. Thank you, Speaker, and I wish today to draw attention to the combined tragedy of the housing and opioid crises that are, is unfolding in Kingston right now, each made more acute by the pandemic. We have few lines of defence against the outcomes of these epidemics, but one of them that is particularly important is the integrated care hub. This hub, although stretched for resources, provides essential support for our most vulnerable. It is, though, Speaker, provincially funded, and we are awaiting the announcement from the province of funding that will allow it to continue its essential work. And it is essential work, Speaker. It serves those who have the most complex needs, and its services alleviate our already threadbare emergency services in Kingston. I would like to share parts of a letter from a harm reduction worker who works at the ICH. They say, from March to December 2020, the rate of opioid-related deaths in KFLNA averaged 20 per 100,000, exceeding the provincial average of 17. These figures are with the ICH open and operating 23 hours a day, seven days a week for almost two years. Without the ICH, we can expect overdose deaths to explode and overtake the rates reported by every other public health unit in Ontario. The ICH was never intended to be a permanent solution, but it is underfunded and precarious, and we need it supported, Speaker. We need the province to step up, step up support the most vulnerable, and provide permanent funding for the integrated care hub. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. I recognize a member from Mississauga, Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, every year 35,000 Canadians experience cardiac arrest in the public spaces and their homes. Unfortunately, some do not survive. It is important to note if they had access to an automated external defibrillator, AED, or CPR, their survival rate would have been doubled. In 2002, Mikey Salem, a family man cherished by many, was enjoying golf in beautiful Muskoka when his heart skipped a beat. Far away from help, Mikey passed away. To ensure similar people affected by sudden cardiac arrest have a second chance at life, Heathwood and Herty launched the Mikey Network organization. Since 2003, the Mikey Network has installed 2,700 AEDs in high-risk locations, including schools, police stations, and go trains in Ontario, and has provided CPR training to over 1,300 people. By using AEDs or Mikey's survival rate are increased by up to 50 percent, and as a result, 47 lives have been saved to date. I want to say thank you to the management of Malton Masjid for informing me about the organization and for your hard work to arrange an AED for the safety and well-being of our community. And I also like to extend my sincere gratitude and thanks to Huron, Morty Henkel, and the entire Mikey Network team for your determination, compassion, and contributions. Your organization exemplifies the true Ontario spirit. And thank you for saving lives. To learn more, to my colleagues, you, they can visit at www.mikeynetwork.com because when hearts stop beating, Mikey's save life. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Niagara Falls. Speaker, I rise today with a question for the people of Niagara and all Ontario. Is life more affordable today than it was four years ago? Four years ago, we heard newly elected Conservative government make lots of promises regarding affordability. What happened? Four years ago, the government said they were going to lower hydro rates by 12 percent. They've actually gone up five. This government promised to cut gas prices by 10 cents a litre. In Niagara Falls this weekend, it was over $1.50 a litre. That's a 30 to 50 cent increase per litre over four years. Buying a home in Ontario and Niagara is out of reach for most people. The median price for a home in Niagara has increased by 33 percent in four years. What cost $381,000 is now $717,000. The rental market has skyrocketed. The average cost of a one-bedroom in Niagara Falls is $1,400 a month, a 17% increase in one year. And this government cut rent control measures. Child care in Toronto is upwards $2,000 a month, yet this government won't sign the deal for $10 a day child care. While inflation rose 6 percent this month alone, the Conservatives refused to repeal Bill 124, with caps the wages of nurses and other workers at 1 percent. But you know who the Conservatives made sure we're taken care of. 
multinational corporations, billionaires who made record profits during the pandemic, companies like Walmart, Amazon, Loblaws, for profit long-term care operators were taken care of while 4,000 seniors died from COVID in their facility. In 100 days today, we can change this. There's a provincial election. We can elect a government that will make decisions that make life more affordable for all of us, not just the Conservative government's wealthy friends. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On November 30, 2021, I joined Ms. Lee Soda, Agent Court, Ex Agent Court Community Service Association, AXA for short, Executive Director, and the staff to make a $369,600 dollar funding announcement to Scarborough Aging Court students for the after-school program to support safe and supervised activities for students during the school year in priority neighborhoods across our community. The program helped kids stay active and engaged, improve academic performance, and encourage leadership skills through activities such as sports, recreation, and physical activities personal wellness, anti-bullying, nutrition, education, and internet safety. Students in 10 Scarborough Agent Court School will benefit from this timely funding. This funding announcement for Scarborough Agent Court Schools are part of our government investment of $13,500,000 to Ontario After School Program to support 100 10 organizations that provide activities for children living in high-priority neighborhoods across the province. AXA is the worthy recipient of this funding, which helps 45 families in each school to fulfill their potentials and live a healthy life. AXA has been a pioneer in serving our community, especially during these challenging times. Their staff have been at the forefront of reaching out to our most needy families, residents, and seniors. We are fortunate to have such a dedicated organization and team to make our community a better place to live, work, and raise family. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Sudbury. Thank you very much, Speaker. And Speaker, today I want to talk about Jim Hobbs. Jim was a steel worker, a hard rock miner. Mining helped Jim provide for his family, helped him ensure that his four kids could finish post-secondary. Unfortunately for Jim, like 25,000 Ontario mine workers, he was forced to breathe finely ground aluminum dust known as McIntyre powder. It wasn't optional. This was a condition of Jim's employment. It was breathe it or get fired. Before each shift, they'd seal the doors of the dry, they'd seal the doors of the change room closed, they'd turn off the ventilation, and they'd pump a gray mist of fine aluminum into the air and encourage the miners, breathe deep, boys. This will coat your lungs. This will protect you from harm. McIntyre powder was an unproven medical treatment. As early as 1946, international medical and scientific communities warned of potential harm to miners' health. Despite those warnings, it was forced on Ontario miners until 1990. It was used with the full knowledge and sanctioning of the government of Ontario. It was supported by the Ontario Department of Health and the Workers' Compensation Board. The only Ontario study completed on these miners found statistically significant cognitive decline in McIntyre powder exposed miners. In 2001, Jim was diagnosed with Parkinson. He died May 24, 2017. But Jim wasn't the only miner forced to walk into a cloud of aluminum dust. Jim wasn't the only miner told to breathe deeply. Jim was one of 25,000 Ontario mine workers forced to breathe aluminum dust, and no one has ever officially acknowledged or apologized for locking miners in rooms and force them to inhale metal or lose their jobs. The remaining miners are elderly, they're health com compromised, many are dying, many like Jim are already deceased, but all of them, Speaker, deserve an apology for what happened to them. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for York Centre. Speaker, I first saw the Charter a few months after we immigrated to Canada on a wall hanging by the elevator in a North York Central Library. I loved it from day one, which is why I'm blessed to guest lecture on it and defend it in this House. Canada's Charter is magnificent because it doesn't just enshrine our rights subject to reasonable limits. 
The Charter is all Canadian because it protects Canada's pluralism, Canada's diversity, Canada's freedom of choice. That's why I and many Canadians condemn the blatant assault on our Charter by Justin Trudeau's declaration of emergency. One may disagree with the protesters' opinion, but the Charter says they have the right to assemble. The alleged infractions may be dealt with by municipal traffic or criminal laws. Canadians are frightened that they may be doxxed or financially ruined. Canada is the talk of the world. Our country is not recognizable. The declaration of the emergency is not rooted in fact since the situation is resolved. It's not supported in law since there is no dangers to lives and safety, since it can be resolved by the province and may be dealt with by other laws of Canada. This is about Justin Trudeau's ego in politics because the science does not support him on the mandates and no one even talks about the virus anymore. This is all a distraction, a distraction from the failure of lockdowns, passports and mandates, a distraction from the mental health pandemic, a distraction from the last two years at the expense of our democracy. It must be condemned and it must be opposed. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brantford, Grant. Thank you, Speaker. I am absolutely thrilled to announce that recently in my riding of Brantford, Grant, Minister Calandra and I were able to announce our government is adding 59 new wow. and 69 upgraded long-term care beds to modernize and expand Hardy Terrace in Mount Pleasant and adding 83 new and 45 upgraded long-term care beds to a new building for Telfer Place in Paris. This is part of the government's $6.4 billion commitment to build more than 30,000 net new long-term care beds by 2028 and 28,000 upgraded long-term care beds across the province. The project at Hardy Terrace in Mount Pleasant adds new and upgraded long-term care beds through a renovation to the existing home. The home will have a total of 160 long-term care beds after the renovation is complete. Hardy Terrace will continue to offer specialized services, be a part of a campus of care, and has proposed to provide cultural services to the sick community. The project at Telfer Place in Paris involves a brand new building for the existing home. Telfer Place will have a total of 128 long-term care beds once the new building is complete. The home has proposed to continue current volunteer-based partnerships and collaborations with social, emotional, spiritual, and physical service groups to continue to supporting resident needs. Construction of both homes is expected to start by spring 2024. There are now 266 new and 318 long-term care beds in development under construction or completed in Brantford Brant, 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 Brant. Speaker, this is welcome news for my residents. Thank you. Member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour to rise here on behalf of the great people of Brampton North, as a matter of fact, of the great people of all of Ontario, as we continue to celebrate Black History Month. Now, I was honoured to be a guest speaker at one of the events in Brampton, the 21st annual Black History Concert, and I want to thank the United Achievers Club and the Congress of Black Women Brampton Chapter. In particular, I want to thank Marjorie Taylor, who organised the event. Well, we missed the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to be together in person because of COVID, but we still had a great time enjoying and learning all about the great achievements of black people, not just in Brampton, but right across Ontario and Canada. Our province, as we all know, is home to a, a many, many vibrant black people in Ontario, and many communities that are vibrant in Ontario. And Ontario could not be the province it is today without the strong, dynamic black leadership at the provincial and the municipal levels. To our black communities across the province, I want you to know that the Black Caucus and the official opposition, we see you, we hear you, and will continue to fight for justices for you. From education to health care to justice, we will be looking at every aspect of political life through the black lens. Now, this year's theme for Black History Month is February and forever. And what does that mean? It means that we're going to celebrate black history, not just today, not tomorrow, but every single day of the year. And of course, Mr. Speaker, I have to talk quickly about the elephant in the room. We still have anti-black racism. We'll continue to fight anti-black racism in all its forms, and I, join, and I ask everyone to join me, regardless of what color we are. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Well, thank you, Speaker. There's more good news for Region of Durham residents. Last Friday, our government announced that it's restoring fairness and cutting costs for drivers and businesses in Durham by permanently removing the tolls on highways 412 and 418, effective April the 5th, 2022. 
We've heard the people of Durham loud and clear, and we agree that the tolls imposed on Highways 412 and 418 by the previous government are wrong and unfair. And that's why we're removing the tolls on these highways so that people and businesses have more travel options and hard-earned money in their pockets. Speaker, the previous government unfairly targeted drivers and businesses in Durham Region by imposing the tolls on highways 412 and 418, leaving them underutilized while local streets became increasingly gridlocked. When the previous government imposed these unjust road tolls, they placed a financial burden on drivers and families in Durham Region, including my riding of Whitby. By delivering on our commitment to remove these tolls, our government is fighting gridlock while supporting, once again, hard-working families in the region of Durham. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. And I beg to inform the House that the following document has been tabled, a report entitled Ontario's Labour Market in 2021 from the Financial Accountability Office of Ontario. I will now ask our legislative pages to assemble. It is my honour and pleasure to introduce this group of legislative pages. From the riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound, Leah Elder. From the riding of Barry Innisfil, Pania Ganian. From the riding of Kitchener Conestoga, Maverick Harris. From the riding of Hamilton Mountain, Dante Hillen. From the riding of Scarborough Southwest, Tanisha Hossein. From the riding of York Centre, Elia Karen Sagiv. From the riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore, Julia Markson. From the riding of Waterloo, Zane McKinnon. From the riding of Dufferin Caledon, Morgan Schultz. From the riding of Essex, Benjamin Selmy. From the riding of Willowdale, Owen Shen. And from the riding of Etobicoke Centre, Kristen Tawija. And from the riding of Richmond Hill, Lucia Way. Thank you very much. And before I invite oral questions, I'm also pleased to inform the House that Paige Julia Markson from the riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore is today's Paige Captain. And we have with us today in the House her parents, her mother, Alicia Markson, and her father, Joseph Markson. Welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We are delighted to have you here. Thank you very much.